on worldwide television, so I don't know. Give us some men who know the truth. And who will declare the truth? And who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards? And who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation? Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Forum podcast. We are a collective of Reformation minded Christians that care about doctrine and the local church. To learn more about the Gospel Forum, please visit our website, thegospelforum.com. There you'll, you can check out articles and resources and learn more about who we are. And also make sure you are subscribed to us on your favorite podcast app. And don't forget our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all of our latest episodes, which are also available via video. Well, my name is Dan Sardinas, and I am the pastor at Northwest Baptist Church in Bradenton, Florida. Today is a unique episode, and I am not joined by my other brothers in the Gospel Forum, but I am joined today by a very special guest who I will introduce to you in just a few moments. Before I do that, let me in again encourage you to sign up for the Gospel Forum Conference 2023 that will happen on November 11th in Sarasota, Florida. The theme of this conference this year is Pursuing Holiness. And there is an early bird rate going on right now of just $20 per person or a family rate of $50 flat for three or more in your household. Doesn't matter if you have 20 kids, it's just $50. So don't delay, sign up now. And it will be a tremendous day with preaching, breakout sessions, coffee, donuts, refreshments, giveaways, and other free items and resources, books. And we will have food trucks available for lunch. So don't delay. Get over to thegospelforum.com and sign up for the early bird rate before those prices go up. Well, let's get to our main topic of the day. And today we have our first ever guest, believe it or not, on the Gospel Forum. <laughs> And he is my good friend that I've known since my college days, uh, Dr. Brian Fairchild. He's a pastor at Colonial Bible Church in Midland, Texas, and he's also the director of the brand new Academy for Expository Preaching that is a ministry of One Passion Ministries that was founded by Dr. Steve Lawson. Brian, welcome to the Gospel Forum. How are you doing, brother? Hey, Dan. Thanks so much. It's so great to be with you again, brother. After all these years, it's nice to uh, reconnect and, and have these long friendships. So uh, it's it's a blessing to be here. Thank you for having me on. Amen, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on and telling us more about uh, the Academy. I'm looking forward to learning more. And uh, this is a great fit for our audience because the Gospel Forum is all about equipping the local church. We uh, started the Gospel Forum because we care about doctrine and the local church and the reformation of our local churches according to the standard of God's Word. And so training men how to preach or just people how to study the Bible in general is very important to us. So we're so glad and excited to have you on today. But Brian, why don't you tell us, I, I know about you. Um, we go back <laughs> almost 30 years now, believe it yeah, or not. Yeah, wow. Um, We're old, us, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And if nobody believes that, just ask my kids. They will they will confirm that. Yeah, amen. Uh, and likewise. <laughs> and our, why is it that our, that our kids think we're ancient or something? But that's oh, yeah, okay. my, my, my My teens often refer to, you know, the old times, like in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> What is up with that? Yeah, oh, you know, man. I don't know. But, their day well, is coming. Eggs, I was just about to say, their day is coming, and they will have the similar things said about them. But Absolutely. Well, Brian, Brian, why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your church there in Midland? Yeah, so uh, I am a native of Midland, Texas. I have an interesting uh, situation that I pastor in, which I'm grateful for, but never mad imagined in a million years that this is how God would would work in my life. I, I actually grew up here, and Dan, you and I met then um, in college in Florida, uh, mm -hmm. up in the Panhandle, and so I uh, left the uh, deserts of far western Texas and uh, 
went to Florida, lived in the swamp for a few years, and uh, then uh, went to seminary in Kansas City. Uh, in between, I, I met and married my wife, uh, Nicole. Uh, she is a native of Ohio, so um, she is now a confirmed Texan, but we met in college, <laughs> same time I met you, and uh, we married, and we have three children. Uh, Weston, Evan, and Julianne, 18, 16, and almost seven. So we, we've got a big spread. It keeps us on our toes. But we're, we're so grateful to the Lord for our family. Uh, the Lord led us after seminary back to, to Midland, uh, and we planted the church here in 2002. And so by God's grace, we've been pastoring here for 21 years. Praise God, brother. Wow. That's what very encouraging, especially longevity in one place that is to be commended and thank you for your faithfulness and i know it's you would say it's all by god's grace 100%, so yes amen amen well tell us some more about uh the academy for expository preaching yeah. um yeah tell us a little bit more about what that's all about how did it begin yeah the healthy diet of the church as you and i both know and, and attempt to practice with the lord's help is uh, you know just a, a systematic sequential exposition of scripture. Most of the time that's through a book, um, as we both strive to do in our ministries, but but you know, and I know that that it's the word of God, as Luther said, that does the work of God. Mm. And so we, we want to be faithful in how we disseminate um, the word of God. And the academy is all about equipping men to do that more faithfully. And so, um, man, we, we are so blessed at the academy. We, we have men who have gone all the way through PhD programs to, uh, believe it or not, we had one young man in his later high school years that went through the program and did an outstanding job um, just trying to discern uh, if God is calling him to, to pastoral ministry at some point in the future. So we we cover the gamut. We have all students from from all over the world, literally in every different situation within the local church. Some are pastors, some are elders, some are Sunday school teachers, some are just men who want to know what preaching is all about so that they can more faithfully pray for their pastor, support their mm -hmm. pastor. Uh, it's elders that are sending young men to us at the academy to help them evaluate their lives as, as to their giftedness, uh, whether or not they may, may be called to preach. So uh, yeah, we're excited about it, but the academy is, is here to equip and to ignite and uh, to encourage pastors, preachers, lay people, whatever the case may be, to be committed to that sound exposition of God's word. That's great, brother. Um, how how is a Dr. Lawson involved in the academy? Can can you help our our yeah. listeners understand that? Yeah. So Dr. Lawson created the academy, um, and uh, I, I kind of joined up with him, and he he asked me to help him uh, about two years ago. And so we we worked on it for about a year. And then uh, we launched in August of last year. But it, the, the, the academy currently um, has one course. It's called our foundations course. Dr. Lawson lectures uh, in that course. So he's really the teacher. Um, he, he provides all the substance there for us. Uh, but he, he has 28 lectures that he gives. And it's really exciting to me. It starts out with a history of preaching through scripture. So he starts with uh, Genesis and goes all the way through Revelation and surveys the different uh, models and examples of preaching uh, from Genesis to Revelation. So you can imagine mm -hmm. that's quite the diet uh, just in itself. Uh, he is such a historian as well as a theologian preacher. So it's very helpful. And then the, the second part of that course goes into a philosophy uh, of expository preaching. What is it? What does that even mean to help people cultivate a commitment and a sense to a sound definition of that? Then the last third of the course is the mechanics of expository preaching, actually walking men through the process of writing a sermon. So we, we have them uh, reading books. They read three books. They uh, work through an exegetical assignment where they just make observations in a text uh, that's graded by um, a man who's who's been trained by Dr. Lawson. Um, we have some some really great mentors and graders that, that are with the academy. 
They give feedback to the students. Um, they take that assignment to produce the next assignment, which is the actual sermon manuscript. That again is turned into your mentor and they grade that, they give you feedback how to improve that. And then you take that and construct, uh, or you, I'm sorry, you don't construct, you actually preach that sermon then. And you turn in a video of you preaching that sermon, at which time you get more feedback uh, from your grader. And at that point, that concludes that particular course. So uh, Dr. Lawson, you know, he, he wrote the curriculum, um, he teaches the curriculum, and uh, yeah, it's just great. So if you know Dr. Lawson's ministry at all, you, you know the, the depth and the passion that you get from him for preaching. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm not just saying this because you are on, brother, but Dr. Lawson is probably my favorite preacher. Uh, I love yeah. to hear him preach because what exactly you just said, the passion, you could just hear it. It's not, he's not just giving you theological facts. He's not, right. it's it's there in his voice, in his, uh, uh, his authoritative command to repent and to search the scriptures and to make uh, to take action based on what God has commanded. I love it. And so mm -hmm. I, at Sh Shepherd's Conference, um, I, I was sat into, you know, not hear Dr. John MacArthur in the first session because he had an injury, but I was so excited that Dr. Lawson was preaching, which made me think, well, are we going to get two Lawson sermons? But we, were, <laughs> uh, we were blessed to have Conrad and Bayway at the end of the conference, but uh, I would yeah. love to have had two Dr. Lawson sermons. But anyway, yeah. so yeah, uh, yeah, this is, I, I, I think wonderful because, uh, and, and I uh, I love what you said there. It's just this academy is not just the information of what is preaching, but it's actually the evaluation and hands on. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to make it really successful, in my opinion. It's just not a classroom setting where you're learning, but you're actually doing, and you're you are sending in manuscripts and videos of these sermons to your instructors that can mm -hmm. then give you critical feedback to improve your preaching and sermon preparation. I love right. that. It's just not read this book and learn more about preaching, but it's, hey, let us walk with you and show you how to do this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We want to provide content as well as experience. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, Joel Beakey uh, is big on experience, what he'll call experiential preaching, which is nothing more really than, than, than application, making sure preaching connects and has application well that's dr lawson as well spoken but like a with, modern puritan right Joel yeah Beacon. yeah yeah with, but with the passion right <laughs> that's right you're, that's right you're talking about passion you know dr lawson that that's how god wired him that that is him mm -hmm. but but it is something that i think he also learned from his mentor rc sproul who once wrote that dispassionate preaching is a lie mm. there's no passion are you really preaching amen you know, and, and passion looks differently for everyone. There's no one model of of passion, um, but but you can certainly tell when it's there and when it's not there. Yeah, and it's definitely something that cannot be copied or imitated. It's got to be genuine. It, Absolutely, it, it got to, it has to flow from a love of the preacher for the word itself, mm -hmm. and and a love for the people whom he is preaching to. Because you could have a love for the word, but not love the people. And I don't think that's a full sermon either. You got to have. No, both. it's not. Not at all. No, no, you're yeah. preaching at them, not to them at that point. Amen. Exactly, brother. Exactly. So are these courses then like, what is the format? Is, are they yeah. uh, like, are they on DVD? Is this over the internet? Help it's us all understand online. that. Yeah, it's all online. So uh, you, you can go to the expositors academy.org, the expositors academy.org. And uh, you sign up, and once you sign up, uh, you get access to the course material. It's all online, so you you view all the lectures online, and then it as you are working your way through that syllabus, it will cue you in. Hey, you need to read this book mm -hmm. at this point, and then take a quiz on that book. And you know, just so your listeners wonder, you know, maybe what kind of books do you have us read? Uh, we go to the classics, man. We we have them read Preaching and Preachers by Martin Lloyd-Jones. Mm, we have them read amen. Between Two Worlds by John Stott. And then we have them read Dr. Lawson's newest book on preaching entitled Called to Preach, uh, which is just, again, another, I think it's a magnum opus on preaching. It combines 
um, the best of really a lot of the worlds uh, that, that need to collide to make the whole preacher? Are you called to preach? What does a call to preach even look like? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what, what does the preacher's life need to look like? Uh, you were talking about personal holiness for your conference that's upcoming. You know, that's important. Uh, then there's then then you get into the actual study of God's word and uh, going all the way through to the sermon. And, you know, by that point, you're fired up to preach. So uh, you're watching the lectures, you're reading those books, you're taking quizzes on those books as you go through. And then as you get to the end of the lectures that you watch, we start walking you through sermon preparation step by step. That's great. So <clears throat> I bought a copy of that book called to preach by Dr. Lawson, um, probably last year, I hadn't had a chance to get around to it and forgot I had it. So when I was at shepherd's conference, of course, you go to the big tent, I saw Dr. Yeah. Lawson's book, I said, Oh, I've been wanting to get that book, forgetting <laughs> that I had already bought it. So I actually have two copies of that. And so I, I just thought about this as was not prepared. So uh, if you're listening or watching this uh, right now, share this episode on social media, okay? And uh, share it with the hashtag um, Academy for Expository Preaching. I know it's a long hashtag, hashtag Academy for Expository Preaching. And uh, I will take a look at that in the next couple of weeks and select one person who shares that. Uh, to receive the book, I will contact you for your address and send you the book. So I will get you, you are going to benefit from my forgetfulness and receive my extra copy of Dr. Lawson's book called The Preach. There you go. Uh, whoever does that will be blessed. I can promise you that. It's a great book. Amen. Amen. So um, how are how can those interested sign up? So there, the website you've already mentioned, is, yeah. is there is there a long process of getting signed up? Is no, there an approval? Probably, how, how does that all work? Yeah, so we just have a, a, a brief application process to go through. And we have a, a doctrinal statement that, that we put forth and want guys, and, and you know, it's not, uh, it's a very sound, robust doctrinal statement, but not so particular that, uh, you know, if you're not a Reformed Baptist like us, you couldn't sign it, you know. So, uh, yeah, we just want you to be in basic agreement with, with fundamental truths that are, you know, consistent across uh, the various faithful uh, spectrum of, of Christianity uh, down through the ages. So just that. And, uh, yeah, it's not a long process uh, to go through it all. And uh, do it, man. Do it. Uh, if, if you're, you know, I would encourage elders and churches to all do it as well. Um, give it as a gift to your pastor. Uh, because even if you've been preaching for a number of years, maybe, Dan, especially if you've been preaching for a number of years, it's good to have that tune-up and that Amen. Absolutely. encouragement and that refreshing. And I think you touched on something with sermon evaluation. I think that's a really big part once we get into ministry that we miss. Hmm. We, we need to regularly check ourselves. We need to regularly have others who have our best interest at heart checking us. I mean, we, we all have critics. There's no shortage of that in our preaching. That just comes with the territory. But we do need others who, who understand what preaching is. Uh, and, and it's not just flattery, nor is it destructive criticism, but it really is constructive criticism from a heart of love for the glory of God revealed in Scripture, love for the communication of that glory through expo uh, expository preaching and love for one another as, as men on the same side of the fight, you know, we want to encourage one another. So yeah, that, that evaluation component is, is huge. That's great. That's great. So yeah, I was just going to ask you, how can local churches utilize this, but you just mentioned it, uh, give it as a gift to your pastor, the elders in the church could, um, there are already probably working with some men that they're evaluating or assessing maybe to become elders or possibly to send them out. Um, so I think that that'd be a wonderful tool as well. Excellent. Yeah. And I would just say, you know, Sunday school teachers, it's great for, for men teaching Sunday school. Uh, it's great to, again, help evaluate young men who may, who may sense, Hey, I, I love what you do, pastor. That really draws my heart every Sunday. I think God may be calling me to do that. Well, if he is, uh, there's going to be certain things about your life that'll be true. And, you know, maybe uh, there's pastors out there and they're not comfortable evaluating their elders or they're not comfortable evaluating maybe young men. Let us do that for you. 
by sending them through the academy, get an objective, uh, you know, input from someone who has the the years of experience, and, and then hopefully that benefits everyone involved. Great, awesome, brother. Thank you, thank you. Well, Brian, I, I want to. Is there anything else you want to mention about the academy that we didn't talk about? Yeah, you know, I I, I think the one thing I would just say, Dan, is that. The, at last count, we are currently in 16 countries around the world. Wow. Um, praise God. And, uh, you know, the demand for this material is really like drinking from a fire hydrant. Hmm. Uh, our, our goal, th- th- this just excites me because there's such a hunger and I want people here to possess this hunger as well, but such a hunger around the world for sound preaching. And, you know, you and I, before we went on with the podcast, we talked about that. And you talked about how in your church and in the churches of, of the Gospel Form Collective, that, that there's a real hunger. People are, there's, they want God's word fed to them. Well, that, that's true globally. Our goal at the beginning of 2023 was, would the Lord be gracious enough to us at the academy to get this into the Spanish language? That was our goal by the end of this year to have it in Spanish. Well, you know, by God's grace, and it's just his hand every step of the way, it's not only going into Spanish. We're currently in production with Spanish, Portuguese, Mandarin, Russian, and French. Mm, wow. We're in talks with um, Arabic, Hindi, and Telugu uh, as well to get this to pastors in India and uh, the Middle East. It's just the Lord is opening doors, and the response to it globally has just been tremendous. And so I, I would just encourage any of your listeners to subscribe to as well to One Passion Ministries. You can go to onepassionministries.org or the Academy for Expository Preaching.org, either one of those. You know, sign up, um, watch the go to the YouTube channels and, and listen and look for what God's doing, put your name on the email list, because there's, I can tell you this, it's exciting. There's going to be opportunities for people to get involved um, who may not even want to go through the course, but maybe they want a scholarship pastors who can't afford it in, in countries around the world. Uh, they can help us with different projects. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, we're going to be recording it in November of this year, a new course as well. And so uh, you know, want to make your listeners aware too that we're going to do a course on not only the foundations of preaching, but how then to improve your preaching, which is kind of the next step, right? And mm. then beyond that, uh, we're, we're going to do eventually, we're going to do one on how to preach the Psalms, how to mm. preach Romans, how to preach evangelistically. So we've got a full drawing board of material that's going to be coming down the pipeline soon. And and I, we would just love for anyone that is of a mind to, to join us. Thank you, brother. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We will definitely encourage people to do that, encourage our listeners to go visit those websites to learn more. And again, share hashtag Academy for Expository Preaching on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram with this episode, and you'll be entered to win that book. Brian, I just want to talk to you for a couple of minutes about preaching, since we're talking about yeah. it. We've already, shared, we've already shared a little bit about preaching, but um, what makes a good sermon? Because I mean, probably most of our listeners are are not pastors, so yeah. they're 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 faithful church members sitting in their churches listening to sermons every week. How should a Christian listen to a sermon? Prepare for a sermon. How how do they know they're listening to a sermon that would be edifying to them? Yeah, that's a great question, Dan. Um, I you know I think just in the experience of of being in pastoral ministry for a number of years, you mentioned longevity. Um, I think there's just a a few key things that that come to mind as I look at the people in my own church that encourage me greatly, because I think they are good listeners. And so I, I, you know, this is nothing original with me, or it's just as I make observation in healthy Christians, we talk a lot about healthy churches, healthy churches have to be made up of healthy Christians, right? Amen. So, as much as they look to us for an example, I think we look to to them as an example in this question. Right. And I think these are people who are, number one, they're faithful to be at church, right? So mm-hmm. 
one of the things that makes a good listener to a good sermon is somebody who understands the context. Mm. They, they heard the sermon last Sunday, which hopefully what's the appetite for next Sunday right. and they just keep rolling. So I think you've got to be, be there. You have to mm. be present in the sermon or, or you might not get what you would hope to get out of it. Um, so you can't cherry pick. You need the whole, the right. whole book. Right. So I think it's somebody who's faithful. I think it's somebody who's prayerful. Um, Michael Fabares has a great little book entitled Praying for Sunday. And this is for people in the church to get. It's a little booklet. We've handed it out here several times over the years, but it just helps people prepare their own heart and mind. You know, things like praying for that particular text, reading ahead in the scripture to know where the pastor is going. And again, that's where you and I can help them as pastors. You know, if we're preaching sequentially, well, they know where we're going next Sunday. It's not a, you know, it's not a mystery. It's not show up and find out. They know, so they pray, they read, they can e even start to study. Um, so I think if they're engaged in that, and then, you know, I think the last thing is, is that application. How do I apply this? A sense of stewardship maybe is the right term. They need to take ownership of what they've heard and not just come and listen because we can all become sermon snobs and just mm. consume, but it's, I want to consume with a heart for application. You know, so I, I think those are just some really basic things um, that, that people, if they're wanting to really engage and grow, that's that's what I've seen in people who are healthy and engaged. Those are kind of some hallmarks that that I see in their lives. Amen, brother. Yeah, that's very helpful. Yeah, as our people leave at the end of our driveway before they go to the main road, we have a banner that hangs uh, there near near the end of the driveway that says "Worship never ends," and says, mm -hmm. "What will you What will you do with what you heard today?" And Amen. it's just a reminder yeah. to them, hey. The sermon continues. Now, what would you do with it? So I think that's yeah. wonderful, wonderful practical advice. Thank you, brother. Yeah, and, you know, I think uh, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's going to continue to preach a better sermon than we did. Amen. And, and he's Amen. omnipresent, eternal, immutable. He's going to continue to use that. And so I think maybe that we could add that in as a component, right? Understand the Holy Spirit and Absolutely. what he's going to continue to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, very good. And one one last question I, I think would be very helpful. You know, you had the the privilege and honor to have Dr. Lawson as a professor of preaching at uh, the Master Seminary, and of course now working closely with him in the academy. Um, what would you say is maybe the most valuable lesson you've learned from Dr. Lawson um, or two, you know, what, whatever you'd like to share um, wow. in the area yeah. of preaching? Yeah, in the area of preaching. Um, one thing that I think is more caught than taught, although it is taught as well from Dr. Lawson, is just that he he lives what he preaches. He really does. It's I think it starts with his life. Um, he, he is a godly man. He is a prepared man personally. Uh, and I think that's where that passion comes from. He walks with the Lord. And so I, I would say I've learned that about him. And there's a consistency about him that... Um, breeds great power in preaching. Uh, and so I, I think it starts with the heart preparation. It starts with the man himself. And he's called by God. He, he, he walks with God. So I've learned that from him. And that's incredibly important uh, because you don't move past that. You may for a time be able to pretend, but, but you're either going to burn out or it's going to be revealed what you really are. And so um, I, I've learned that from him. Uh, he's, he has preached now for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not at one pulpit like John MacArthur, but he's, he has been engaged in preaching for over 50 years. I want to learn all I can from a man who has that kind of longevity, right? Um, so uh, a second thing I would say I've learned from him, there's so many things. I think precision is so important. He is so careful with his words. He labors over words um, tremendously uh, in prayer as he writes sermons. Um, 
if you speak with him, you know, as I have, I've been privileged to work on some of his book projects with him as well. And, you know, he'll say, what's, what's the word we use here? And I mean, he'll labor for 30 minutes over one word, you know, because of that precision. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. He is not, the, he is not sloppy in anything that he does. And that comes through in his preaching down to the word. The, the third thing I would say along with that is write yourself clear. Uh, a good preachers are good writers. And so find some outlet for yourself to write, even if that is your sermon notes, rewrite those. Uh, as he likes to say, there are no, no good writers, only good editors. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I think that's incredibly important is that skill of writing to help us refine our preaching, that labor over precision uh, to communicate it that, that's that's wrapped in a heart that's right before the Lord, that loves people, as you mentioned. Um, I, I think those are three big lessons that I've taken away from him amongst a host of others. Tremendous. Tremendous. Well, great. Well, brother, it's been an honor and a privilege to have you on this podcast to tell us more about the Academy and your thoughts on preaching. And we so appreciate you. We'll be praying for the Academy praying Thank for the you. men who will be going through it and the local wow. churches that will be, will be blessed as a result. So yeah. great. Amen. Hey Dan, if I could just say, if anybody listening has any questions about the Academy, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if I can just give my email, it's director at the expositors academy.org director at the expositors academy.org. So um, yeah, just reach out to me. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. And the website again is? Uh, theexpositorsacademy.org. Great. Awesome. So please check that out for more information or email Brian if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today and want to know more information. Well, yeah, thanks this, for having me on. Dude. No problem, brother. Well, this has been another episode of the Gospel Forum podcast. And until next time. Keep on reforming. Keep on reforming.